So today I'm rekindling an old combo now that we have an amazing new card from Lost Caverns which turbocharges your win and can do hundreds of damage in just one swing. Hey everyone, Hex here and today I want to show just one synergy available with a new card a load of people are raving about. But before I start, don't forget to like and if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe below. It massively helps out and I want to thank you all for the support that you give this channel. But onto this deck and today I'm going to be casting Roaming Throne, which is a 4 mana 4-4 four four golem with War 2 that says when it ETBs, name a creature type and triggered abilities of creatures that belong to that type will trigger twice whilst it's on the battlefield. The potential of this card is endless and I'm determined to explore as many as possible, but today I'm going to be going left field and naming Warrior. Now why Warrior? Well the other combo creature in our deck is Devilish Valet, a 1-3-3 mana Devil Warrior with Trample and Haste, whose power doubles each time a creature ETBs on your side of the battlefield. That means with your roaming throne hanging around, the Valet's power doubles twice with each new creature. So how do we get maximum creatures entering for minimum mana? Well we're going to use our good old friend Gleeful Demolition, destroy an artifact you control and welcome three 1-1s to the battlefield, which in turn with the right setup double your Valet's power six times, going from a 1-3 to a 64-3 in one fell swoop. I'm going to be using Candy Trail as a cheap artifact to sacrifice, which helps us find our three combo pieces and a reprint in Lost Caverns in Treasure Map. I love this card in combo decks as you get to scry each turn, then when you've done this three times it becomes a land, you get three treasure tokens and you can sacrifice the treasure to draw a card. All in all these artifacts are perfect for your gleeful demolition and I couldn't be happier with how they got on today. The rest of the deck is a kind of is it control build with a couple of very specific cards. Firstly disruption protocol. I love this counter spell when you have artifacts laying around as you get to tap one and pay just two mana to counter any spell. In this deck you can even tap your roaming throne as that is an artifact. I've got Memory Deluge for some key pseudo card draw that doesn't trigger those Sheldreds and I'm playing Voldaren Thrillseeker. Just a one off today but without a roaming throne on the battlefield you can still combo off by playing this targeting your valet. It gets two plus one plus one counters with its backup then doubled its power to six as it enters the battlefield. You can then cast your Gleeful Demolition the fairway to get to 48 power or play another valet, attack your opponent then sacrifice it post combat with its backup ability. It's a good plan B for us and a way for us to win without actually attacking. I've got Lightning Strikes and Brotherhood's End, the latter being great as our Roaming Throne survives the board wipe and today I'm playing 24 lands. You could go down a couple if you wish because we draw so many cards and scry so often we can normally filter our way to the correct cards that we want quite easily. This deck has been a blast to play with, it's the best valet deck that I've had as it's not that janky, it's robust and enables you to play a draw go strategy until you fire off your combo to win on one turn. I found naming warrior with your golem is best as your opponent wouldn't be able to guess what's going on as opposed to naming devil which sounds way more sus to me. Anyway if you have any thoughts on this deck or any cool combos with roaming throne let me know in the comments below, you can find me over on twitter and as always thank you for watching. All right, on the play, and I will gleefully accept this opening hand as we have our demolition and some cheap artifacts. So we'll start out with a tap land. Could have played the Shivan Reef and got a candy trail down there this turn, but okay, we found an untapped land anyway. I wasn't to know that, so we will play a turn two treasure map. Really nice card for a combo deck helping you to find your combos early on and then use the mana it could, or the treasure it creates to ramp into something big a little bit later on. Opponent mills us though. Okay. There's a Restless Spire on top. Not too concerned about that card, so we will bottom that. We find another one, sure. So if we're up against a mill deck, as I am presuming at this point, then we need to make sure that we find our combo pieces as quick as possible and Candy Trail puts a devilish valet on top. Now I am crossing every single part of my body here hoping that they don't mill us this turn, that they hold open some mana maybe for a counter spell or a removal spell or play that Somnophage. But I guess that would be a 0-0. Zero, zero. And they let us draw our valet. Well, they don't know what we are doing here but if they do have a mill effect in their hand they will have regretted that if they watch back this video. 
But anyway, the opponent with Jace, the Perfected Mind. And that is going to make us... Yep, mill three cards. And we will just shoot Jace. Get that off the battlefield. And we will scry a Roman Throne to the top. Alright, so our hand has our three combo pieces. We'll play this Roman Throne. It has Ward 2, named Warrior. A lot less sus than naming Devil, I feel. And Invasion of Armanka is going to make us discard a card. But we can fire off our treasure map here, which is going to scry. Sure. Memory Deluge on top is fine. And then with the treasure it produces, we can use our Candy Trail to draw that Memory Deluge. And then when we come to discard a card, we can discard our Memory Deluge, which is perfectly fine to have discarded for us. And opponent plays a tap land, and I think this is a green light for our combo here. We'll play the Valet. We'll play our Demolition. We'll target our Treasure. And that will boost our Devilish Valet. Well, that will double it six times up to 64 power. Attack our opponent for 68 for a great win there against Mill. All right, on the play. Pretty okay hand. Have some of our early artifacts, which are going to help us find our combo pieces we're missing, the two creatures. Candy Trail, a couple of lands. Don't want those. We will put those to the bottom of our deck. And there is a Roman Throne. I've been very impressed with Treasure Map so far. It just feels that in a more controlly deck, it is such a good card. I didn't play with it originally um, when it was first released, but I am certainly playing a lot of it in Lost, or since Lost Kevins of Ixalon has been released. Anyway, opponent with a Prowler and Eccentric Farmer, so it looks like they are on a Graveyard Shenanigans style deck. But we can deal with uh, smaller creatures. It's things like Urborg, Lurgoifs, and the new cards from Ixen that I'm going to have a problem with. So we need to speed up and find our devil. Name it Warrior again. And Blanchwood Prowler. Mill some more cards. So a lot of creatures for our opponent. Gumming up the board a little bit, but I'm fine with that. Setting upkeep stops for our treasure map. It's a Thrill Seeker. It's a one of in the deck. It's a plan B. We certainly don't need that. If we had a... Devil in the battlefield, that would have been a fine card to keep. And yeah, we are just filtering our way through our deck, playing our artifacts as much as we can to keep scrying. Another demolition. Treasure map is okay, but we've got a couple. We'll bottom that and play another candy trail. Huh. Brotherhood's End is actually, in this specific situation, quite a good card as it wrecks all our opponent's creatures. Just checking to make sure that they can't get plus one counters on them before I keep that. It's also going to keep our Roman Throne alive. So it's going to be a very one-sided board wipe. Hopefully they play some more three toughness creatures. Well, they play a Ren and Realm Breaker. I wonder if they up it here. If they do... No, they down it. Okay, a minus two. So Brother Huzen's going to have another target, and it's going to take out a Planeswalker, which is, which is really nice for us. So I'm not even going to think about it too much. We'll just do three damage to each creature, each Planeswalker. And that's got to be pretty back-breaking for our opponent. However, I'm still worried about some of their cheap creatures that are going to come out with massive stats because their graveyard is so chock-a-full of creatures. We're just a devil away from winning though. As long as they don't have a removal spell. I feel like if they had one they might have gone for the Roman throne. And another eccentric farm up for them. And a, another Blanchwood Prowler. Okay. 
So we've got a big chance here. We have a lot of card draw this turn. We'll start off with the scry before our draw step with a treasure map. And it is another Roman throne. Do not need that one. Although two of those on the battlefield with a devil would be fun. Candy trail here to sacrifice looking for our devil. Just a lightning strike. Not what we want here. Did find a disruption protocol and I don't want to go too crazy. One of the downsides, I guess, for our opponent's deck is the toughness on these creatures. This is an Urborg Lurgoyf coming out as a 10-11. Obviously, that would block a large portion of our attack with our Devil, but we will use our Disruption Protocol and stop that from entering the battlefield. Surely we can find a way to win this game here. We'll use our Cove to sack a treasure, draw a card. There's our Valet, finally. Feels like forever, but we'll play this, and I'm pretty certain that they can't deal with this. We'll sacrifice our candy trail, or we'll destroy our candy trail. 64 power, and we'll attack for 68 damage again. And the trample on the valet here is going to be crucial. All right, on the draw, we will keep this hand as we have a counter spell there. No early artifacts for us though, as opponent would be Zeotora's Proving Ground. So hopefully they don't get off to too much of a quick start. And that is a Scrap Gorger, which is good for me because of the Brotherhood's End. So this is the turn where I'm a bit worried about a land into like a Shieldred. Oh, it's Bushwhack, okay. Searches for a basic land. And they search for a swamp. Okay. There's a Skull Dweller. Death Touch, 1-1. One, one. And a Hex Mage. Okay. So up until the Hex Mage, I'm presuming this was an Obliterator deck as they are searching for swamps. They have a Skull Dweller and they have a Bushwhack. Cards that you would want to put in a Obliterator deck. So we could fire off the Brotherhood's End here. And it actually just wipe the whole board. But if they play land... Four mana creature that we can't destroy with a follow-up Brotherhood's then we're in trouble. So we'll play the Candy Trail and hold open our protocol here. And hopefully they just add more cheap creatures to the board. Don't really want either of these cards. So yeah, we'll just uh, get rid of those. Say go. And opponent is going to eat a card from our graveyard with the Scrap Gorger. Or well, each card from their graveyard, sorry. Ours is empty. Alright, let's see if our holding open the protocol is being worth it. Just another Scrap Gorger. Okay. Not something I want to counter. But it's just another 0-3 on the board. So we're pretty much in exactly the same situation as we were in last turn. They rumble with the 3-2 only. Not sure why they didn't attack with the 1-1. Not sure at all, to be honest. And that is another counter spell. All right. This is kind of good for us. We'll just pass the turn here. So much different game to the last game when we were just drawing and scrying our way into the cards that we need. Much slower control build here from us. Here comes an obliterator and we will disrupt that one. We can just pay for it or tap our candy trail if we want. It doesn't really matter either way. And yeah, opponent down to two cards left. And a couple of creatures that can't really attack. And a 3-2, and they do attack with the 1-1 this time. Uh, that is a no-block situation. But what's pretty cool here is we can Brotherhood's End on our turn and hold open the Disruption Protocol for any more crazy creatures that they want to play. So really glad with how we've played this game. This is going to be pretty backbreaking for them. Really want them to play a big creature here. And then we can disrupt it, but we will see. It would be nice if we could find a Roman throne. Okay, there is another obliterator. 
we will tap our candy trail and we will counter that one. Just a restless spy, okay. So we're pretty much out of gas a little bit here. I think we will attack with our restless spire to scry. And I might cash in my candy trail. Although we need an artifact on the battlefield, we absolutely need some some combo pieces. There's no point having it on the battlefield if we can't do anything. And we don't have a counter spell, so let's sacrifice this candy trail. Gain three life and we will draw a card. We draw a treasure map and a deluge. All right, cool. Well, we'll play the treasure map and I kind of like where we are all of a sudden. This is a big turn though. They have five open mana. We really can't interact with them. Beseech, eh? A straight up Beseech. So that's why the Hex Mage is in the deck. They're looking at Beseeching the Enchantment, the Aura token. But they're playing sort of a naked Beseech here. And there's a Bushwhack. I'm not sure what they would have found. Probably another Obliterator, I would have thought. So probably want to try and dig our way to a counter spell here. We can Deluge. See what we can find. And we'll take a Demolition. And a Deluge. Draw a Thrill Seeker. Had we taken the other Valet? Did we have Lethal there? I think we probably did. But you know what? We've got Lethal anyway. Because we can play the Valet. Play the Thrill Seeker. Target in the Valet. It's going to show how we can win without the Roman Throne. And uh, gleefully Demolition our Treasure Map. I think if we'd taken the other Valet... We could have done like 22 damage with two valets on the battlefield. But it doesn't matter. Opponent goes down to minus 30 anyway. All right, on the draw. Hand seems pretty nice. We'll keep this one. And that is a swamp for our opponent. So our hand is pretty fine with a virus beetle making us discard well we'll discard a deluge and that is a mountain okay well we'll play that and we'll play a candy trail here treasure map and a roman throne on the top okay we will keep those both on the top actually i like both those cards Another virus beetle for our opponent, and we will this time just discard a lightning strike. And they get in there with their one of their beetles. Play treasure map, and then we will hold open the mana for the scrying effect. So if we're up against mono black, again, we just need to keep our valets free of opponent's removal spells. They look like they're missing mana though. So let's go for Roman Throne. It has War 2, so they will not be able to deal with this this turn. Unless they have a Edict effect. And a lot of these decks do have Edicts. Graveyard Trespass, okay. So they eat our Deluge from our Graveyard. But we will scry in our upkeep. Another Candy Trail. I don't mind Candy Trails. They're pretty nice cards at just helping us get to where we need to. I guess the Roman Throne is a bit of a, a wall for our opponent. Make sure we play a spell to stop the Trespasser from transforming. But yeah, it's a bit of a roadblock for them. They can't get through it. It has a ward, so it's difficult for them to deal with. And that is an arena for our opponent. Okay. So we find a Lightning Strike and a Deluge after sucking our Candy Trail. We'll play one of these Deluges. Thrill Seeker and a Throne. Well, we'll take Land because we definitely need that. I guess we'll take Thrill Seeker. Other cards are probably not that interesting for us. Thrill Seeker is just another way of us winning the game or getting some... Uh, life taken off our opponent. Hopeless Nightmare is going to make us discard a card. Sure, we'll discard Lightning Strike. 
as normal. And there's the namesake card for our opponent's deck. They are playing Braids, Arisen Nightmare. And they're going to start sacrificing, I'm guessing, their enchantments. Yeah. Hopeless Nightmare, so they get to scry two. And we need to sacrifice an enchantment, or they draw a card and... We don't have an enchantment there to sacrifice, so that is annoying for us. Disruption Protocol will be annoying for them. Just need to find a Gleeful Demolition here and we're in business. Guess we could have played a Devilish Valet there to stop the Trespasser from flipping, but it's just so vulnerable to removal spells and I really want to be casting Deluge. But opponent we've shouldered and I'm glad we've got a counter spell open here because I really wouldn't want that on the battlefield. So that's a kind of edict effect that gets around Roman Thrones Ward. We will certainly counter that one. I wonder if they attack with their 4-4. They do. And they're eating from our graveyard as opposed to theirs but that's because they want to get rid of the deluge I would have thought. And we go down to 12 because I am not blocking that. And Braid's Sacrifices a beetle. Well, that is an artifact, I believe. So we will uh, decline that, though. Okay, we will scry. And another lightning strike on top. But we do have a load of treasure now. So we're still just one card away from winning. Just the gleeful demolition. Let's drop our memory deluge now. Okay, there's Demolition. Guess we just... Yeah, we'll take both the Demolitions. I think we're one mana off, because if we play the Valet, um, we need that last treasure to sacrifice, but we also need it to pay for the Demolition. And we can't target our roaming throne with gleaming demolition demolition because with it not on the battlefield it will actually stop the devilish valet's trigger it happening twice which is unfortunate but we should win the game next turn as long as we survive this turn hopeless nightmare okay discard and draw sorry discard and we lose two life okay all right, well, we'll play Island, or we'll discard Island. And there's Besiege. So even if the opponent gets rid of the Roman Throne, we can still win with our Valet and both Demolitions, or Valet, one Demolition, and the Thrill Seeker. So we have a couple of combos in our hand. we just got to survive. I have no idea what they're looking for in this Besiege. Oh, it's Lily. Okay. I right, make a sack of creature. So we could have sacked our Restless Spy there, I guess, but we would have eaten all of our treasures that we need to try and win next turn. Guess this is a lethal attack, isn't it? Because they just sacrifice now their Phyrexian Arena with their braids and win the game. Or Liliana. Ha. Huh. They've sacrificed their insect, which means that's just an artifact. Oh, opponent... I think we've got this. They definitely miss lethal there. We'll cast our Valet. We'll play Thrill Seeker onto the Valet. And this is how you win with Thrill Seeker and Valet. And then we'll do the Gleeful Demolition. They 100% miss lethal. They should have sacrificed the Liliana or their Arena because we wouldn't have a permanent to sacrifice. And they would have, uh, we would have lost two life. So yeah, we'll take that one.